Yes. Thank you. I absolutely love that song. It has carried me through loads of interviews and presentations, and I've only had to listen to it 257 times today to get on this stage. Um, so, yeah, so I want us all to stand up. I know we did if you can, so I'd like you all to stand up. And I'm going to start with a question. So, I want you to stay standing if you've ever felt extra stressed and overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that you've got on your plate. Okay, no one sat down. I want you to stay standing if you felt that way in the last month. I want you to stay standing if you felt that way in the last week. Oh, a lot of us. I want you to stay standing. You feel a bit like that today. Whoa, yeah, it's a lot of this. Okay, have a seat for a second. So, as much for me as it is for you, I thought I'm going to start with some stress-busting tips. Are you up for some stress-busting, yes or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're up for that. Brilliant. Okay, so I want everybody on their feet again, if they can. There's going to be a lot of up and down, up and down. And I want you to face me like you're conquering the world, like, or at least conquering that to-do list. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yes. Oh, really good, really good. Now, I want you all to imagine that you have got the biggest, tightest pants, for me it's M&S, over my clothes. So really tight, because you are all about to audition for your new movie of Superwoman, Superman as well. <laughs> and you're about to show your superpowers. So I want you to stand feet width apart, strong stance, spread your toes, hands on your hips. This is a very good power pose for a superwoman and a superman. Okay, and we're going to do a little bit of breathing. Everyone know how to breathe? <laughs> okay, I remind myself. Um, so I want you to breathe and start from your toes and all the way up to your head. You're going to breathe in through your nose. But actually, we want you to expand your tummy like you've eaten the biggest box of chocolates. And I am going to later. So <laughs> let's breathe in through our toes, expand our tummies, and then breathe out through our mouths. Let go a bit of that stress and worry. Nice. I think we'll do that again. Let's breathe in and let it go. Okay, so here's the fun part. So what I want you to do is put the shape of a smile on your face. <laughs> and have a bit of the crazy eyes. And then I want you to look to the person on your left and your right and keep those crazy smiles. That's it. Keep that. That's it. Keep doing it. That's it. Good. Oh, yeah. Crazy. I want to see teeth. Have your teeth everywhere. Brilliant. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is it. This is magic, everyone. This is magic. These tips you can't get everywhere. Um, so we're going to sit down in a minute, but not before we remember that we are wearing the tightest pants that we've got over our clothes. So when you sit down, I want you to let out the biggest groan. Okay, so the biggest groan. Oh, come on, sit down. Okay, so here is the thing. So the next time that you are really stressed and you are really overwhelmed with your task and that person, we've all got one, haven't we, that comes towards us and they want, they, you just know they want something, all you've got to do is take a deep breath in, breathe out, give them that smile and give them the look that says, yeah, I may look like I've lost my marbles, but now isn't the time to test me. <laughs> Trust me, they're going to leave you alone. They are. So I like to call that tip the crazy face tip. It's a good one, it's a good one. Are you up for another one? Yeah. Oh yeah, good one. Okay, so for this one, I want you, this is a really good one if you've got lots on your plate, like a to-do list. Um, so I want you to think about all those things you kept standing for, all those things on your list. And then I want you to think about what are the top three things that get in your way? So what are the barriers that stop you from doing those to-do lists? And if you've got pen and paper, a loose bit of pen and paper. I just want you to write that down quickly. Don't overthink it. So the top three things. And what we've realised is, actually, if you write it down, you're more likely to connect to the task. Okay. So when you've done your, your three, I want you to now prioritise it, because prioritising is really important. So top one, two, three. Yes, this is really important part. Okay, don't overthink it. Just decide from the gut, one, two, three. Okay. So when you're done, I want you to take that loose piece of paper and stand up for me. So just rip it from your pad and stand up for me. <laughs> I 
I can tell the thinkers in the room, you're still going, still going. <laughs> <laughs> so stand up for me with your piece of paper, please. Okay, lovely. I think we're ready, we're ready, everyone's standing up. So what I want you to do now is to get your piece of paper, and I want you to screw it up. I can with all that, oh, get that stress out. Oh, like, screw it up. And then, when I say go in a minute, I want you to follow my instructions. <laughs> so I want you to find a person in the room. Could be the person next to you, or someone, if you're a bit more challenging, the person at the back. So find a person, and then what I want you to do when I say go, is I want you to throw it at their head with due care and attention and shout bollocks to that as loud as you can. <laughs> go! Uh, on me! <laughs> Brilliant. I like to call that the bollocks to that tip. Brilliant. I could go on all day with these. <laughs> Have a seat for me. <laughs> There we are. Sorry, everyone. Lots of tidying up to do. There we are. Uh, love that one. OK, so I'm going to go on to my final tip. So what have we learned? Well, I've learned that some of us can't throw, including myself, <laughs> which is good. It's good. And you may have learned that I am not the typical expert in the room. And uh, they say an expert is someone who knows more than the average person in the room. And my expertise lies in falling, as people who know me in the room. And I fall over, literally <laughs> and metaphorically, all the time. But what I have learned is my greatest opportunities for growth have come from that learning. And what's more important than anything is I have learned that laughter gets me through. And laughter, for me, truly is the best medicine. And that was instilled from my lovely mother, who says, you have to laugh or you cry. Have you heard that one? You have to laugh or you cry. And we as a family, we believe that even in the darkest of times. It's Sunday morning and there's lots of noise. There's humming and there's beeping. And there's quiet noises and there's loud noises. And you'll find me following my mum's trolley through A&E through to the critical bay. Hello, I'm the registrar looking after your mum. He's a tall man with very strong features, an accent I don't really recognise, probably German, I think. And that right now, he's shown very little empathy. <sighs> We've had the results of your mum's brain scan, and I'm sorry, she's had a significant bleed on the brain and there is nothing that we can do. Have you ever had a time when you absolutely didn't know what to do next? Me, I didn't know what to do next. Me and my two sisters didn't know how to do that. But somehow, we did. And life was never the same again. So why am I telling you that? Well, in the days and weeks that passed that fateful day, I lived the trauma of that day over and over again in finite detail. It was like a movie that just played over and over in my head. And as the days and weeks passed, actually, it became more sinister. And memories that I'd seemingly locked away from my childhood came back to haunt me. I was fortunate enough to meet a wonderful counsellor called Jasmine, who really helped open up to things I'd never ever talked about before. And I remember one particular day when she asked me a really poignant question. She said, Lisa, why is it you have all these great ideas and then when you're on the verge of success, you seem to hold back or you sabotage? What is that? What is this success to you? And I look at her and say, I'm really disappointed with where I've got to in my life right now. I'm constantly striving for something, but if you ask me what it was, I really can't articulate it. The thought literally petrifies me. I'm a single mom looking for love, but scared to be seen. I'm in a, a, I'm, I'm in a career I wouldn't necessarily choose and a body I, I 
don't recognise anymore. She looks at me and said, Lisa, it seems that you found a way to help other people, but you have yet to help yourself. And I smile and go, oh my God, I'm like the worst self-help guru ever. <laughs> and she laughs and I laugh. And she says, you know what? I think maybe people want to hear about that. You know, it's real. It's about being human after all. She says, uh, I think maybe one day you might write a book about that. Yeah, maybe. Have you ever heard the saying that we're human beings rather than human doings? So why is it that we spend most of our time doing rather than being? So raise your hand if you're the type of person who seems to be rushing through life. You're always on one of those life's carousel, never giving any moment to pause or to get off. Me too. This go, go, go mentality is what I like to call the condition of busyness. And I, cause, I call it a condition because the definition is a state of being. And I talk about busyness. But what I mean by that is constantly striving to meet other people's expectations. John Hopkins research cites this as pervasive, unavoidable and actually damaging to our mental and physical health. And more gravely, it's impacting on our ability to have healthy relationships. So you might be wondering, why am I so passionate about this condition of busyness? Well, let me take you back to August 2020. The sun is shining through in my very plush office. I've got lots of luxurious office furniture, like a single bed and a wardrobe. <laughs> and you might have guessed, because of the time we were in lockdown. And I'm on a virtual call with Simon. Simon is in his late 40s. He's slim. He's an avid cyclist. And his hair is starting to tickle his eyebrows because, of course, all the hairdressers are shut. <laughs> I've been coaching Simon for a couple of sessions now. And we're on our third session. And I, uh, I'm really interested to ask how he is. Hey, Simon, how's things going? Well, Lisa, yeah, yeah, things are good. A lot calmer. And I feel really relieved. I feel really relieved that actually I made that decision that I don't really want to go for that promotion anymore. It was just something I thought I had to strive towards, but it was making me really unhappy. My family are unhappy, you know. So, yeah, I feel good that I've made that decision. Hmm. Simon, I hope you don't mind me saying, but I noticed that you're playing with your wedding ring. Is everything all right at home? Oh, Lisa, why do you always notice these things? <laughs> oh, no, actually, they're not all right. It seems like every time I walk down the stairs, my wife and the kids, to be honest, take a step away from me. And, uh, you know, I don't like it. How long has this been going on? Do you know, I, I don't know. I think I've just been busy and I just haven't noticed. But I'm definitely noticing now. It's like we're doing this dance. I take one step forward, they take one step back. And I really don't like it. Well, do you think that's something we could work on, you know, together? Yeah, I'd really like that. Have you ever had a time when you knew a change was needed, but you didn't know which direction to go? And that was Simon. And I was really happy to work with him on those different elements. And we did some research and I worked with some amazing people. And we were able to look at things from a, from a whole life perspective. So it's a couple of weeks in and we've been doing lots of tours and I'm back on that virtual call. <laughs> Hi, Simon. How's things been? Lisa, I feel friggin' human again. <laughs> I can't believe what a difference it's made. I've done all the things that you asked me to do. I've been working it through. And do you know what I realised? It was me. Like, I was just really frustrated. I was trying to look at other people's expectations. And then I was stressed and burnt out. And I was taking it out at home. And, you know, they just didn't want to be with me. But now things are really different. We sit down together as a family. We work it out. We, we communicate. And actually, we've decided together what we want to do. So things are absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Wow. That's really good. It worked, believe me. <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. Do you know what? You said it is. And thank you for the kick up the arse that we needed. Um, 
And me and my wife were on the settee the other night and we were talking about this and saying, you know, how much it's helped. And I can't be the only person who's got impact at home and at work. You know, I think there's loads of people out there feeling this way. And you know what? You're really good at it. I think you should do more of this. Hmm. So I guess that might have been the start of my program. And I'd love to say, as life is, that it's really easy. And overnight, I turned into some transformational wizard. But life isn't that easy, is it? <laughs> so procrastination, I'm known for that. And indecision and the doubts started kicking in. And I thought about, well, what would my colleagues say? Um, and I said, Lisa, do you think people want to talk about their personal life and business at work? Isn't that just for therapists? I thought about what my friends and family would say. Lisa, you're always taking on new things. Is this just another one? I know you've always wanted to be Oprah Winfrey. I have, I have everyone. <laughs> and I thought about my own indecision and my own self-doubt and negative thoughts. The condition of busyness. Isn't that just a fad? Who's going to listen to me and talk about that? But I was reminded of the story earlier on and how implicit home and work life are. And actually, maybe we could help some people. So you might be thinking, well, what's the link between the first story and this story? What's all that about? Well, you remember the wedding ring, that level of noticing? Well, that came from my role at the age of seven. You see, at the age of seven, at 5.30, most nights, you'd find me in the front bedroom window looking down to see when my father came home to see what kind of mood he was in. Was he angry? Was he red-faced? Was he slamming the car door? You see, if that was the case, then me and my two sisters and my mom would have to take our positions and hide. And that happened till the age of 14. And at the age of 14, things became so terrifying that we had to escape. And I mean escape, because that's exactly what it was. And I don't want any child to have to witness or go through what we went through and lose out on their childhood and I never want any parent to have to feel that way and miss out on their children. I haven't seen my father for 34 years. He's missed out on the growing up of three lovely girls. I'm the loveliest now. Three <laughs> and our amazing, amazing children, his grandchildren. Isn't it a shame that he couldn't see that it could be different and what the impact he could have had? Just over two years ago, I found out he was still alive and I reported him to the police. After much pulling from my end, they eventually found him in the last month or so and he came in for questioning and he denied it all. But after a new level of rejection, I come to a place of peace where I think we know, and he knows, and hopefully my mum knows that she did the right thing. So, so now you know what's really driving me behind this condition of busyness and this passion. So I want to talk to you now about how you can become the human that you're meant to be. So I talked about my programme and I realised actually working with some amazing gurus and experts and practitioners and therapists <coughs> and friends that there are probably just five steps that you need to become the human that you're meant to be. And interestingly, they spell the word human, which I like. So you might want to put human at the top of your page and I'll, I'll take you through. So, for those of you who stayed standing or put their hand up and said, I'm constantly rushing through life, then you might want to take my first step, which is halt. So what do I mean by halt? 
Well, for those clients who do halt, they get a real chance to take a pause. And I don't mean just a little break. I mean a pause to get some real perspective on where they are right now. Because without that, we can't see the wood for the trees. Those who don't will continue to go on this path and they may find that they f f end up in the stress and burnout pot. So we've had a little bit of me time. Is that enough? Well, no. Not if you're putting others' needs before your own and if you're constantly doing that. So if that's the case, then you might want to uncover. And what do I mean by that? Well, those clients who uncover, they stop wearing busyness as their badge of honour. And they are absolutely able to get to the root cause of what's driving their condition of busyness. Um, because without that awareness, then they may get stuck in un unlimited beliefs and not be able to move forward. But, but those who don't will continue to find that their diary manages them, they get into overwhelm, and ultimately their resilience is impacted. So we've had our new perspective glasses on. Is that enough? No, there's a theme here. <laughs> no, not if you're still saying yes to the things that you don't want to do anymore. So you may want to do my next step, which is manifest. And what do I mean by that? Well, it, you might go, oh, is that about the universe? And I love all that. But no, actually, um, the definition is to make clear or evident. So this is about setting new boundaries. I'm really understanding, like those great philosophers, the Spice Girls said, what you really, really want, <laughs> ziga ziga, and what you don't. And I don't know if you'd agree with me, but there's one word out there. It's a little word that if you learn to do it well, then can change your life. And I, what I mean by that word is the opposite to yes, which is no. So people, uh, those of you who are able to, to do manifest are able to just turn up to those things that really matter and say no confidently to those things that no longer serve them. So where are we at? So we've halted to have a bit of pause and get some, new, some reflection. We've uncovered what's driving that condition of business. We've set ourselves some new uh, set ourselves some new boundaries. So now we've got two options. So I'd like to call them the fall option and the all option. My assistant. <laughs> there they are. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So fall, just so we remember, and all. So what do I mean by that? Well, actually, there's a little asterisk there. Because uh, the first option is the F4 option. So <laughs> if you get to this stage, and you've got great awareness, but you take no action, then F4 is going to happen. We can't have change without action. But if we take this option, the all-in option, then you will work with us to get some really productive, focused action to make that change. So we're nearly there, final step. So um, raise your hand. If you've ever had a time when you've made a massive change, a big habit changed, and it's all going brilliantly well, and then that little voice in your head says, oh, you can have today off. And then it turns into a week, then it turns into a month, and before you know it, you're back where you started. Yeah, I know, I've been there. Um, so this final step is nurture. It's really nurturing those changes to be able to make them stick so that you can become the human that you need to be. And I call the whole of this system the only human bounce back recovery program, helping you not only to bounce back from limited beliefs, but also to bounce back into the human that you are meant to be. Underneath all this are tools and resources and experts who will help along the way. So on my final note, I want us to uh, finish where we started with a stress busting tip. So in the break, which will be soon, I want you to use your legs, get them shaking. Use your arms, and I want you to walk over to my table, which is at the back. <laughs> and I want you to spin the wheel. You might get a prize. Find out a little bit more about my five-day challenge. And more importantly, buy my book, which is called The Worst Self-Help Guru Ever. Thank you. <laughs>